In this episode, I will be covering Final Cut Pro 10 and why this is my favorite software for editing drone footage and share nine reasons why this might be the right editor for you. I will also take this opportunity to pitch a new series of video editing that I'm working on that I'm pretty excited to share with you. Make sure to watch the video to the end so you know what topics I will be covering. Welcome to this series of drone footage editing tutorials that will take you through the basic steps of creating a video from the initial steps to the final product. Consider subscribing and hit the bell next to it so you get notified about the next episode in this series. Since I started doing YouTube a couple of years ago, I worked my way through different software packages for video editing like DaVinci Resolve, Filmora and iMovie before I finally decided to go for Final Cut Pro 10. This will be the software I will be using in this series of tutorials. You will probably ask why don't you use Adobe Premiere as this is uh, the professional industrial standard for video editing. I don't want to be tied up in a subscription based model as this adds up over time. And from what I've seen so far, the Adobe Premiere package does not run very fast or stable on the Mac hardware. No doubt that the Premiere Pro is a really powerful piece of software that in some areas will exceed the final cut. It runs on both PC and Mac, so creating and sharing projects between team members is uh, where it really shines. Plus the full integration with the Adobe Suite makes it a really powerful choice. Make no mistake, Final Cut is a full-blown uh, professional video editor as well. And you will really appreciate how easy it is to learn as well as the speed and stability that will allow you to get the job done. Let's take a closer look at the reasons to get Final Cut Pro 10. High speed with background rendering. The speed and stability of Final Cut really blew me away. It handles 4K footage seamlessly, scrubbing back and forward without any lags. This is possible without doing anything to the footage like creating optimized media or proxy footage. Even on my old iMac from 2011, it uh, makes a pretty decent job uh, with 4K footage. It skips a frame here and there, but it uh, definitely allows me to work with the footage. With the Windsor Resolve, everything was lagging so badly that I had very hard time uh, picking the right frame when I was scrubbing back and forward in the footage. So this is definitely something that I really appreciate with the Final Cut. Previews of clips imported. When talking speed and workflow, you can preview the clips instantly and start working with them seconds after the import has been started. Final Cut offers full flexibility on that account. I do have to admit that I most of the time import everything that's on the SD card, but it's a nice option to have. In general, the file management system is very easy to work with without too many weird things going on. The magnetic timeline. When Final Cut Pro 10 was originally introduced, the magnetic timeline was probably one of the most hated features and made long time users turn their back on the software. And this was probably because the approach was really different than what they were used to, where normally you would keep videos in separate tracks. The idea behind the magnetic timeline is to have a main storyline where you are attaching secondary material like B-roll, audio, text, etc. When you take out part of the storyline, the gap closes automatically. This makes it super easy to move certain parts of the story around without losing the edit that you just have completed. I like this part a lot because I often move stuff around to optimize my story when crafting videos. You can even short clips directly in the timeline and the whole story will adapt instantly. High speed rendering with direct upload. When you have completed your edit, it's time to render the video. And with Final Cut Pro, this does it faster than any other editor on the market. It doesn't take much time uh, searching on Google to find proof of this. No one comes even close. It's so fast because Final Cut uses background rendering while you're editing. And because Apple has optimized the software to take full advantage of the hardware. With my brand new 2017 iMac, I can render huge 4K files in less than five minutes. So that's super convenient. On top of this, you can render directly to major sites like YouTube, Vimeo, and even Facebook without the annoying middle step of creating videos uploading through the browser. I really love this part because the turnaround time for cranking out videos is really important to me as a YouTuber making two to three videos each week. Effects and transition tabs with easy access and preview. Final Cut comes with a great selection of effect and transition ready to be used right out of the box. It's very easy to use them from the menu located in the lower right corner. Both effects and transition tab can easily be turned on and off by the click of a single button. All the effects are possible to preview on your current clip by just hovering over it. This makes it fast and easy to figure out what the effect actually looks like. 
Sound effects and iTunes integration is part of the package. Your video editing only becomes better by adding sound effects. And Apple has decided to include a full selection of sound effects that you can freely use in your videos. This is quite a large selection and it will allow you to search them and easily preview the waveform of the audio. Final Cut also integrates with iTunes so you can access all the music in your library. I see where they're going with this, uh, but you'll probably end up with a copyright strike if you're going down that route. And to be honest, I don't use uh, iTunes anymore after Spotify was introduced. And there are better ways to get music for your videos and some of them are even free. Lots of plugins and lots for free. There's a ton of third party uh, effects and transitions on the market and many of them are actually free. This is something I will be covering in one of the next episodes as there's a real potential to do some serious editing without too much effort by utilizing the power of these uh, transitions and effects. If you're into color grading your footage, Final Cut also supports LUTs or lookup tables that can add a certain look and feel to your footage. There's a big selection of third-party LUTs available and they are designed to match the camera that you're using and many of them are actually free. Price model. Final Cut is not free, it will cost you a one-time fee around $300. I like the idea of paying once and getting that out of the way. And with other uh, Apple products we know that you get all the service releases and new features for free. The cloud subscription model that other companies are using would make it cheap to get you started, but it will add up to a significant amount of money over time. You will be able to download a free 30-day trial through the link in the description below. Final Cut will only run on a Mac computer, so this is of course a limitation too. Workflow and extension of iMovie. A one-time fee of $300 might be a little bit steep for some, but uh, you can start out by using uh, the free version uh, video editor offered by Apple called iMovie. The structure and workflow of iMovie is very similar to Final Cut with some limitations, but you can do a lot with iMovie too, especially if you just started video editing. The cool part about this approach is that once you have outgrown a iMovie and decided to take the plunge for something more advanced, upgrading to Final Cut Pro will not feel strange and you'll be able to use the software right away. These were the main reasons why I like Final Cut Pro 10. Techgrown Media has so far been focused much about uh, how to record video and not so much about how you are going to turn this into a final product. And this is actually what uh, kickstarted the idea of this series, digging into video editing and showing you step by step how you make a final video. Because Final Cut Pro 10 is my preferred editor and I've been using it for years, it's only natural to build the series around that. The idea is to make easy to follow tutorials that uh, you can try out at home at your own pace with the sample footage which is the same as I'm using in the videos uh, made available through links in the description below. This is not only me teaching you, it should be something that we do together and improve. So I highly encourage you to ask uh, questions in the comments below each episode. I will try to answer as many uh, questions as possible and even cover some of them in upcoming episodes. You can see an overview of the weekly episodes in the description below. This is subject to change all the time depending on your input. I hope you like this video idea and want to support it by liking the video. If you don't, then feel free to press uh, thumbs down twice. Take care and I'll be seeing you next week. Final Cut Pro 10. 10 Cut Final Pro 3. Fine. 10 Cut Final Pro 10. How many ways can you combine this? <laughs> Final Cut Pro 10 or just Final Cut.